Hey everyone, thanks for stopping in and checking out my video. Uh, in this video, I want to go over the collection, the cleaning, and uh, pretty much the harvesting with the uh, copepods. Now, um, obviously you can see right here, it looks a little dirty from the side. It's because I have the uh, wood behind it, but uh, you never really want the vessel getting this clear. Um, it was a tea green last night when I went to bed. I woke up and uh, it was clear. Uh, now, you can see the colony. It pretty much doubled in size within two weeks. Uh, when I first started out, it was a darker green. After you know about a week, it was pretty good still because it was a small colony. Uh, I then it ended up doubling in size. Um, usually, I'm getting like a boom pretty much. And next thing you know, every day I was adding a little bit of phytoplankton, a little bit of phytoplankton. But it's been two weeks now. The colony's getting big. So I want to clean the vessel out, harvest some copepods, and uh, pretty much reset it. So that I'll be able to get more. Uh, my goal here is, is to have enough in order to successfully house a mandarin goby. Now, uh, one vessel I use, you know, it's pretty simple. It's a glass jar, a one gallon glass jar. I put a little small bulkhead, put some rigid airline tubing through, and I drill a little hole and put some airline tubing through for a little vent. Uh, heated the rigid airline up with a lighter and then I'm bending it so it's easier when I attach the line uh, so I don't have any kinks or anything like that in airline tubing. Now, a lot of people say for copepods, you know, you can have a, a flat vessel for it, uh, container. It's uh, They don't really use a lot of the top surface area. They stay close to the bottom. Uh, but for space, for me, it's better just to have a jar. Um, I like the glass jars too versus the plastic. It's just preference. It doesn't matter. It's not a right or wrong. Uh, so this is pretty much what I did. And it's easier to screw and unscrew and everything like that. And it's easier for me to clean, I just feel. So now this is the actual species of copepods little tigger pods uh, and this is actually the brand now it's a real small bottle you know there were about half of them were alive uh, they go for about 20 bucks but I ended up getting it for 10 because it was kind of on its way out so I figured you know for half price why not you know I plan on breeding them anyway so I think uh, maybe I can get my money back and then some I'm hoping so without further ado we're gonna uh, actually set up and get ready to clean it and uh, I'll show you how to collect some of the tiger pods without you know messing anything up so First, you want to actually clean the vessel. Now, I poured a little bit of rubbing alcohol in, cleaned it out. Now, this is fresh RO water. Swish around a little bit. You want to clean it out pretty good. So, once you end up uh, getting this clean, you know, do it a couple times because you want to make sure, obviously, the rubbing alcohol is all out of it. Take a smell, you know, see if you smell any rubbing alcohol in it. If not, you should be pretty good to go. So, just do, you know, swish around like that. Dump it. Pretty good. See? Smells pretty good. All right, now put that off to the side. Now these are the two pieces I end up getting from Home Depot. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive. This is a clean out adapter I end up getting a four inch, and this is a standard coupling I end up getting. Uh, like I said, this was uh, $2.51. Now it fits coffee filters perfectly, and uh, they're just standard coffee filters, nothing special about it, eight to 10, uh, 12 cups. And uh, pretty much what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take a single one, you're gonna put it in there, and you just take the little uh, clean out adapter, and just push it right through. Now you don't wanna slam it home, because you want to be able to separate it. Uh, and there you go. And this is going to be our little strainer in order to collect our copepods. Now, you don't want to slam it home, like I said, because you will be taking it off and then you're going to end up dumping it in. Uh, so, that being said, let's get ready to go. All right, I got my salt water ready now. Standard salinity is 0.025. That's what I've been keeping it at. I don't want to shock them when I end up putting them in uh, my tank. So, I want to try to keep it close to my tank uh, water parameters. Now, I got my setup right here, I got my strainer, and I got my copepod collection right here. Now I'm just going to take the lid off, and uh, actually it actually looks a little dirty. Um, I'm going to actually clean that off before I end up putting that on top of the new vessel uh, with some rubbing alcohol and everything and clean the inside a little bit. All right, now, you end up pouring them in little by little. You don't want to go crazy with it. You're going to get a little bit of a decent amount of copepods probably in the beginning. When you start getting to the bottom of the vessel is when you're going to really start to get a lot. Now, the first pour will probably be the best strain. You can see all the particles and everything like that that's in there, uh, the detritus and everything. Uh, now, little by little, it starts to go. Uh, I usually do two to three pours probably before I end up changing the filter out. If you end up doing more than that, it usually ends up clogging, and then you have the thing just sitting there full, and you're going to be waiting forever for this thing to strain. Uh, <laughs> that's one of the reasons why I don't like the... Uh, ones you can purchase online because the screen you can't remove and it, it gets clogged and it's, it's a pain in the butt. So now I'm going to pour in one, two, let's do a third one. We'll do a little bit. It is slowing down. So I'm kind of pushing my luck a little bit, but we'll end up seeing if we can get slowly through. Now you don't have to get all of the water out, uh, but you know, you want to try to get a decent amount of it out. Obviously the whole point of this is pretty much to do a water change, clean everything up and 
put some more fresh phyto in there. And you can see right now it's straining pretty good. So maybe we'll give that like a little, like a minute or two. You can kind of see the water dropping uh, through the filter right there, which is pretty good. Now, if it ends up getting too clogged, let's take a look. Oh, there you go. Not bad for a first pour. It's pretty good. So you pretty impressed with the camera, I got to admit. I mean, it, it, it you can see those little things, are, you know, swimming around in there. It's, it's pretty cool. All right. Let's say focus, focus. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, you can actually back it out just a little bit, and it'll actually tilt it to the side. It'll actually... Uh, Pretty much the fresh portions of the filter, you can use the sides of it so it helps strain it a little more because you can see it's kind of dark in the center. So obviously some of the pores of the filter are clogged. You know, it's a good thing though because it traps it so it kind of keeps it there. The Copa Pods now don't stick too much to the coffee filter, which is definitely a big plus. Um, and pretty much when it comes time to dump them, they kind of just follow whatever little water residuals left in there. So as you can see right there, kind of just cup it a little bit. There you go. Let's see if you can see them in there or not. They're all in there. They have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so instead of taking them and uh, just pretty much dumping them right into the new vessel with the clean, fresh salt water. Now, if uh, you dump it in there, they should all come off. If they're not, you can just drop it in there like that and just pick it back up again. Just make sure you check because you definitely want to make sure you get pretty much all of them because that's the whole point, right? We're trying to get as many Coke pods as we can possibly get. So let's see if we actually got a decent amount. Once I end up doing it a couple more times, I'll end up... Uh, looking again and stuff we can see what we got maybe i'll take some screen uh shots and stuff and show you what i was looking at to show you how many are actually in there um now sometimes when you buy coke pods this is what they look like they're in clear water and there's very little phyto in there uh sometimes when you buy other coke pods you'll notice they're in the green water which is a phyto which is their food uh, i kind of do like the ones with the green water better because it kind of gut loads them uh the phyto obviously they're eating the phyto uh, you know, they got a nice full stomach, you drop them in the tank and the fish eat them. It's a lot better than them sitting in some clear water with a little bit of Fido. And, uh, you know, they're starving and then the fish eats them. So it's good to gut load, you know, it's it's really, it's healthier really is what it is. This is actually a really nice pour right here. Uh, you can see not so much uh, detritus or anything like that in the filter. So I'm going to give it a little bit more. Um, let's see. Hopefully we'll end up getting a whole bunch more in there. There you go. It's a little bit much, but it works. Now we're starting to get down to nitty gritty start seeing pouring out now hopefully but by doing this obviously it's going to uh, benefit the colony uh it's going to benefit you especially your wallet because you figure a little bottle's 20 bucks for crying out loud you know um i can't buy that every week that's for sure i don't know if anyone else could let's take a look there we go see them all in there it's pretty nice and there's babies in there too and that's a good thing about the coffee filter you know the, nothing slips through you know the screen or anything it traps pretty much everything you need so I'm going to take this and I'm going to end up dumping it soon as well. And then uh, after that, we're going to probably repeat the process one more time. Should be about enough in order to totally clean this out. Then after that, we're going to end up uh, adding some phytoplankton and we're going to let it sit on a shelf for a week or less. I, I pretty much keep an eye on it every day and see how everything's looking. So let's put this together again. And that's the great thing about this. You just replace the filter really quick and just start uh, pouring it again. If things are quick and easy, you're going to do it more often, you know, instead of fighting with something. Uh, I was had a couple different ideas and let me tell you, it didn't work. It took me about a half an hour to do this and I was like, I'm not doing this all the time. But with this idea, it worked pretty good for me. So there's a little bit of Copa Pod stuck to the side of the glass. So pour a little bit of fresh salt water in there. I'm going to swish it around a little bit and try to get every one of them. So once I am doing that, this vessel will be done and I'll have to end up sterilizing this vessel with rubbing alcohol and everything like that. Clean it with some RO water, let it dry, and before I use it again, I'm going to swish it again with some RO water. And then uh, a little bit of salt water too, just so the salinity stays good. Let's see what we got going on here. All right, that's pretty good. Like I said, I started out with probably just one of these maybe, and now I got, you know, three full. Uh, so it's, it's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the process so far, but I'm going to continue to do this. And then the next time though, uh, I ended up harvesting them. I'm going to take one of them and put it in my sump. So I'll have a nice collection there and then I'll wait a little bit more next time I harvest and I'll at nighttime, I want to drop some in my main display. Now, I do have Coke pods in my display, but I also have some hungry wrasses that constantly hunt these things down and anything else really. Um, but can't blame them, right? So once I know I have a nice collection, especially at night with the light on and I see them all on the side of the glass, I might know it's time. Let's see what we got going on here. All right. You can kind of see them right in the back right there. Um, there you go. Maybe just screenshot will help you out a little bit. And this is just a little side portion. I mean, they're some of them are pretty tiny. There you go. See from the side when I tilt it. 
Now uh, you see a little screenshot right there. So that's pretty much a process right there. Now this is my live Fido culture. Uh, this is Nano uh, Colopsis, I believe it is. Uh, I probably killed it, but it's also referred to as just Nano. Uh, so you're gonna pour it in there. You're gonna have to doing just enough, pretty much, so that you can make it like a light green. Or I might end up going a little darker, being the colonies larger. Uh, that helps to support them for a little while. And the reason why I don't fill the jar up all the way is that as time goes on, like I said, after a couple of days, three days, you might have to add more Fido. So it's better to leave it like this, and then you can just add Fido later on uh, until the end of the week uh, or until uh, two weeks. But I think this is only going to last me probably about a week before I do it again. And here they are all nice and happy, and uh, hopefully they're going to get some full bellies, and hopefully within a week I'll have a heck of a lot more in there. And then I'll be able to start dumping them in my main display tank. Well, that about does it, guys. Thanks for watching.